Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we're looking at the new Gigabyte Radeon HD 7790 OC 1GB GDDR5 AMD graphics card. This one should fill the gap between the HD 7770 and the HD 7850 cards. Before we move on, I'd like to thank Fortacus for providing me this card. Thank you. But now let's move on to the box. Once again we're looking at the Gigabyte AMD Radeon HD 7790 graphics card with 1GB of GDDR5 memory. Gigabyte took it a little bit further and factory overclocked this card to 1075MHz on a core. And to cool this card down, Gigabyte uses their triangle cool technology featuring a 100mm fan zinc. On the back of the box there's not a whole lot to see, but it's mainly about Gigabyte's cooling technology. So why not open this box up and see what's inside? There we go, right on top is the Gigabyte Quick Installation Guide and of course there is a driver CD included, but I'd recommend downloading the latest drivers from AMD's website. As for the accessories, there's a dual Molex to PCIe 6-pin power connector for older power supplies. Last but not least, the graphics card itself and an anti-static bag. Now let's allow the escape so we can take a closer look at the card. Here it is, but I'll quickly remove the plastic protection pieces. There you go, here's the graphics card. I have to admit it looks very similar to the GTX 650 Ti, GTX 650 and GT 640 cards that I've also tested from Gigabyte. A glossy plastic shroud sits right on top of the aluminum heatsink and this 100mm fan will blow air directly onto the heatsink. I like the fact that the fan is transparent. As for the aesthetics, I really find this blue metal part underneath the fan really good looking. But it isn't just there for the looks, it's also for cooling purposes, so Gigabyte's triangle cooling technology. Obviously this card isn't enclosed at all, of course you also wouldn't expect that at such price point. As for the aluminum heatsink, it has a pretty dark finish to it and I liked it a lot. The rear as well as the other side of the card also look very basic, but not bad looking actually. I'm glad Gigabyte used their darker aluminum heatsink, because it really makes a difference when it comes down to the looks. But at such price point, we shouldn't expect something spectacular in terms of the aesthetics anyways, and so I should probably stop talking about it. To power that card up you will require a single PCI Express 6 pin power connector from your power supply and just in case you have an older one you could use the Molex adapter that comes with this graphics card. As always Gigabyte used their standard blue PCB and as for the interface PCI Express 3.0 is used. But don't worry, you could still install this card into PCIe 2.0 slots with minimal performance differences. And up here also is a single crossfire connection for a two-way crossfire configuration. This is a dual slot card by the way. And as for the outputs, there's one DVI out up there, another one below, one gold-plated HDMI output, and last but not least, a DisplayPort output. Up there are some ventilation holes. So yeah, overall this card looks fairly basic, doesn't look very good, but not bad either, and is fairly short. This means it will definitely fit in most computer cases. Now let's move on to the specifications. The Gigabyte Radeon HD 7790OC has 1GB of GDDR5 memory, uses the Bonaire XT GPU, has a core clock of 1075MHz and a memory clock of 1500MHz. The TDP of just 85 watts is very low and that's because of the 28 nanometer architecture. DirectX 11.1 is fully supported and the bus width would be 128 bit. Here in GPC the graphics card gets detected without any problems and you can again see all the specs. 1GB of GDDR5 memory which is not so much anymore these days but still ok, DX 11.1, 128-bit and the 96GB per second bandwidth. As for the drivers, I'm using the drivers that came on the driver CD. Since at the time I tested this card, AMD didn't release any HD7790 drivers on their website. Still this is driver version 13.1. 
I would have used the latest 13.3 beta drivers if AMD had published them on their website. But this was not the case. Like I've already said before, Gigabyte Factory overclocked this card to 1075 MHz on the core and I'm pretty sure you could overclock it even further yourself with that cooler. But enough of me talking, let's finally move on to the benchmarks. So there you go, you saw yourself, the Gigabyte Radeon HD 7790OC 1GB GDDR5 graphics card definitely is not a bad card for the price. 
It's not meant to replace the HD7770 nor the HD7850. It should just fill out the gap between these two cards and I say it really does. I know I didn't show a lot of charts with the HD7770 in it, but I decided to compare it to the higher class of graphics cards such as the HD7070. Don't worry, I'll make a video where I'll be comparing the HD7790 with the HD7770. Unfortunately, I had almost no possibility to compare this HD7790 with the HD7850. I once had the HD7850 myself, but I don't have it anymore and therefore I can't rerun the benchmarks. Back then when I tested the HD7850, I was using completely different settings. But let's concentrate on the HD7790 now. Overall, great performance is offered for the price and as said before already, it fills the gap between the HD7770 and HD7850 and it's definitely capable of running the latest and greatest games. However, I wouldn't say you can run these demanding game titles on maxed out settings. You simply can't, but medium settings shouldn't be a problem. One thing I don't like so much about this card is the low amount of video memory. I'm speaking of 1GB GDDR5 memory. Right now, at the time of this video, 1GB is enough, even for 1080p. But as time goes on, you will soon reach the limit and at such price point, remember it already costs more than the HD7770, I really would have expected to see 2GB of VRAM here. As for the frame times, you saw yourself, the games Crisis 3 and Tomb Raider 2013 didn't run very smooth. But this is something driver updates can fix over time. The temperatures are very very low, so indeed, you can overclock further to squeeze a little bit more performance out of the card. As for the power consumption, it's also quite low. Please beware, I had to test this card with my overclocked AMD FX8350 processor and therefore the power consumption may seem a lot higher than the rest of the cards on the chart that I've tested with my Intel Core i7 processor. I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but I couldn't use my i7 at that time for this test. In the end I'd say this card is for the budget gamer. It's for someone that doesn't have the money for an HD7850, but for something lower. The HD7770 is priced quite reasonable and so is the HD7790. It's priced higher of course, but you also get more performance. So Gigabyte as well as AMD did a great job with this card and I really can't complain much. Pros are good price performance ratio, it plays games fine on medium settings, has low temperatures, is very silent and has a good power consumption. For the cons I can only say, this card comes with only 1GB of GDDR5 video memory. I would have liked to see 2GB here. Other than that it's a great card and I give it an 8 out of 10 and would definitely recommend it for the budget gamer. Again, thanks to Forticus for providing me this product. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit nicholas11x12techx.com to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.